allowance. That's the second or third account on the trial balance, third account on the general ledger. We are in the debit side, so we are in S12. So within S12, we're gonna say equals point to the 14.7. That's gonna bring the balance of 30 down because that's a credit and we're debiting it, which are opposites, brings it down to 15.3. Then we have the receivable account here. Receivable account is the second account on the trial balance. We are going to be the second account on the general ledger. We are going to credit the receivable, so we are in cell P20 equals, and then point to that 14.7. That's gonna bring the receivable balance down to 1,146,300. If we do something to the receivable balance here, we're also gonna to have to do that to the subsidiary ledger. And so we're gonna scroll down the subsidiary ledger, and we determined that the two companies that will be affected on this is P and BD. Now note that uh, I usually have a formula here to tie out what's gonna happen, but in this case, it's because we have the two areas, we kind of have to just hard code the number in here. And that is because we're with we, this 14, of course, 14, seven is accounting for this six, seven and this 8,000 that need to go down. So I'm gonna hard code this in there in cell uh, X 37, negative six, seven, bringing the balance down to zero. And then in cell AB31, negative 8,000. And of course, if we, I'm gonna hold down control and highlight those two cells and Excel will add that up. That's the 14.7, that's this 14.7. If we scroll down here, we can see that if we add up all of them, all the customers, they owe us 1,146,300 in the accounts receivable subsidiary ledger, which ties out to the accounts receivable general ledger here which ties out to the accounts receivable on the trial balance. All right, we got one more transaction. I'm gonna make this a bit larger on the taskbar, back up to 100%. Scrolling over, we're now on 1231. It says, see analysis of receivable aging, uh, adjust the allowance account accordingly. All right, so now we're at the end of the time period and what we're gonna do is we're going to say, of the current revenue that we have made, and in this case we have uh, 378, how much of that do we think will be uncollectible? And there are two ways to think about this. We could think about the revenue and try to multiply that by the amount of revenue that was sold on account that we think will be uncollectible. And a lot of places that I have seen have looked more on the balance sheet. We can also look on the balance sheet and say, hey, well, these are the receivables we have right now. Let's look at how old those receivables are and come up with some type of estimate in terms of how much of those receivables will be uncollectible. And then by adjusting the allowance account to match the account that we will be uncollectible, we will write off the bad debt expense that it will take to get to that amount. So note that what we already have here, we got 15.3 that we think are gonna be uncollectible because basically we overestimated the amount that would be uncollectible from the prior period. Uh, we thought that uh, we started out with in the allowance account thinking that we were gonna not receive 40,000 for this time period. And we still have a 15.3 that uh, we thought we were not gonna receive that, um, that we are still good. We haven't written that off yet. And so therefore, once we come up with how much of this we do not believe we're gonna be receiving, we will then record this or adjust this to that number. So let's, let's show what I mean. This is kind of the idea of where we might come up with this number, what that number should be. So if we had an aging note that what we have here is 1,146,300 in the receivable. If we broke that out to some type of aging, meaning we're trying to find out how much of the receivables are still due, how much are over 30 days, between 30 and 60, 60, 90, over 90. Now, if we looked and broke out the data in this format then and tied out the total, the total receivables then tie out to the amount on the trial balance, 1,146,300. Then we could come up with some kind of estimate. And we would say, well, if it's still kind of current, then we think that 2% will not be correct, be collected. The longer it stays outstanding, then the higher the percent that we believe would be not collected. So we're gonna say four, 10, 95, you might be asking, where did you come up with these numbers? And and that's what, those would be come up with past experience. Past experience would tell us that um, how much of the accounts would be uncollectible. Then we can come up with an estimate and say, okay, well, if we add these up, 
we're, we're gonna say that of the receivables of 1,146,3, based on this estimate, we think that 50,437 will be uncollectible. So we think that that's what the receivable account, the uncollectible account should be, 50,437. And if we scroll over here and see what we have in it right now, we have 15,3 of a credit. So 15,3 of a credit, we want it to be uh, 50,437. Therefore, I'm going to subtract that, minus 15,3. We're going to need another 35,137 in order to get this 15,3 up to the amount that we believe is going to be uncollectible based on our aging calculation that we just looked at for the receivable account. And so that 35,137 is what we're going to have to increase this receivable account by. So this allowance account has a credit balance in it. We're going to make it go up. So we're going to have to do the same thing to it, which in this case would be a credit. So I'm going to copy the, the receivable, the allowance. I'm going to put that on the bottom. Here's the date. We're going to put it on the bottom, paste it, one, two, three. And the calculation that we have here, 35, 137. So we're going to put that in credit, negative 35, 137. And then we're going to have to debit the same amount. So 35, 137. And then of course, what will the debit be? And the debit is not going to be to the receivable because we don't know who's not going to pay us yet. But we do, we're estimating how much of this receivable will not be paid. Notice that if we took it out of the receivable, we'd have to basically uh, go to the subsidiary ledger and try to estimate who's not going to be paid in order for it to tie out. We don't know. W what we're doing is we're going to expense that amount right now because that amount should be coming out of the current revenue. So the idea is we're backing into the, the amount of this revenue that we believe are going to be uncollectible. We don't know who's not going to pay us, but we're, we know from past experience that uh, this amount probably will not be paid and we need to disclose this to our readers. It would be unfair for our, to tell our readers that we uh, have receivables of this amount when we know from past experience that it's really lower than that. We're not going to get that much money and it would be unfair to our readers to tell them that we made this much money when we know that that revenue is too high, really, because some of the payments will never be received. So we need to take that down. So the amount will be here to bad debt expense. You also might be thinking, why don't we debit revenue to take the revenue down? Because the revenue is overstated. That's what we're really saying. We're saying, hey, we made a sale, but we didn't really make a sale because we're not going to get paid on it. So why don't we reduce revenue? And the same idea, we never reduce revenue, really. Um, revenue generally only goes up we make up this other account that's basically taking down the revenue or matching the, the expense of people that will not pay. So we're going to copy this and we're going to paste this down here in C21, right click and paste it one, two, three. And then I'm going to make this a little bit smaller in the taskbar back down to 80 so we can post this out and see if it does what we expect it to do. What do we expect it to do? Well, we expect this account here, the allowance account, the allowance account here to go from 15.3 to our estimate that we came up here to 50,437. All right, so that's what we want it to do, so let's post this out. So we will then first go to the bad debt. Bad debt is here. It's way down here on our trial balance. Therefore, it's gonna be in the dark blue area. It's way over here. It's in AA9, uh, so we can barely see it, but we are in the debit half of it. And I'm just gonna select equals and then point to that 35 137 when we hit enter it's going to increase the bad debt expense we'll see it increase here and we'll also see the net income go down all right so there it is here puts us out of balance and net income went down meaning net income is the uh credit of revenue minus that expense took it down because we reduced it by the amount of revenue that we don't think we're going to get that 35 137 then we're going to post the other side to the allowance account. So the allowance is here. The allowance is here on the trial balance. The allowance is here on the general ledger. Uh, well, here on the general ledger, we are in cell T13. And we're going to select equals and then point to that 35, 137. What's going to happen? This is a credit. This is a credit. It's going to go up in the credit direction from 15.3 to 50,437 that we can see here as well and that ties out to our estimate here so i'm going to scroll back over here 
So there's our activity. So now we think that we are going to have receivables of 140, 1,146,300, but 50,347 of those are going to be uncollectible. How do we know? It's just an estimate. We had an estimate from the prior period, but we need to make that estimate because it would be uh, best for our reader to understand that based on past experience, we don't think we're gonna collect that much money we're, we're going to have to reduce it. The net receivable, this minus this, is one million ninety-five eight sixty-three. Also, on the revenue side, although we made sales of uh, three seventy-eight thousand, we believe that of that those sales on account, thirty-five one thirty-seven will not be collectible based on past experience. We need to report that to our reader and show the net income reduced from this three seventy-eight by the thirty-five. 137 to a net income of 342,863.